Okay, uh, good uh, evening, morning, kung saan po kayo sa mundo. Ito na naman po kami, mga ma- makukulit na podcasters. Kasama ko yung vlogger na friend natin, si Mark Gomba- Gamboa, our no. partner in crime. And today we have another senatorial candidate, of course. Uh, of course, dun sa previous edition, uh, kinausap po natin si uh, Attorney Chel Jok, no? pinag-usapan natin yung judicial institutions natin, human rights issues, yung mga reforms na kailangan sa ating uh, state institutions. Today naman po, we have a public educator, someone also very special. In fact, naabutan ko po siya nung nasa college ako. Millennial po ako, medyo mas matatang millennial. <laughs> naabutan ko po siya. He's a very forceful speaker and uh, I'll tell you, hindi ako madali magbigay ng compliments sa speakers, you know, as someone who's a public speaker himself, right? He was very motivational at uh, naalala ko, every time I go into the USD area, nakikita ko yung mga billboards niya, among others. At fashionista din po, no? So if you want to have a fashionable senator, perhaps this is your guy. Let's see. All right, kasama po namin si Dr. Carl Balita. Maraming salamat po, Yo, sir. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. It's, it's really a privilege to be in your show. Um, I'm here somewhere in the Cordilleras and uh, I'm, I'm glad that the signal is okay. Nice to be in your show. Always, yes. always, <laughs> always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Maganda po yung background nyo. Nagustuhan namin yung mga plants and all. Maybe <laughs> next time may pine trees na lang. Okay, uh, Sir Carl. Uh, as usual lang style naman because this is a long form, hindi lang zingers ang hinahanap naman. But later on, we're gonna get quotable quotes and zingers from you. Si Mark na bahala magpa-controversial nuggets dyan. First of all, we wanna get to know a little bit more about you po hmm. before trying to understand bakit kayo sumabak sa Senate race at anong gusto niyo mangyari dyan sa Senado natin. <laughs> Hopefully after these elections. Hmm. Uh, pag, uh, you know, God willing, uh, you know, you know, you got what you deserve. Um, well, in this case, Uh, can you say a little bit about your background po? Paano kayo pumasok dito sa review center? Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to call it business industry in that sense. And, and yeah. in what sense that has that informed yung idea nyo ng leadership? No? And later on, ho- your hopes to join the government? Well, I, I was a provincial who went to Manila. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking up a course that initially I did not like. No, I took up nursing, nursing. <laughs> at UST. <laughs> right, you know, right. you, you, can you imagine my first uh, return demonstration for IM injection? I collapsed. Yeah, oh. my first uh, my first child delivery that I assisted, I vomited. Not yours. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that, that's that's uh, what happened to me, and I was trying to distract myself from you know from the course that someone else chose for me. Uh, I became engaged with student leadership, so naging presidente ng klase naging representative I, I was a student leader and I became vice president then I became president of my student council I was the first nursing student to run for the supreme student council um, and and uh, that was my student days but then I loved nursing when I learned about teaching it and the humanity in it then I found myself in a university Pamantasan Lusod ng Maynila I was faculty there then I was pursuing graduate studies hanggang naging national reviewer ako, I published a book and the book became bigger than life. You know, uh, Anywhere I go, makikita ko may gumagamit ng libro ko. Then I said, uh, instead of me being paid to conduct reviews, I put up my own uh, my own review center under my brand and then uh, the brand grew. I'm, I'm now in 120 cities all over the country. I have bridged the dreams of almost a million professionals already. In, in various courses, nursing, uh, education, of course, criminology. And now I have, I, I, I ended up, before the pandemic, there were like five or six courses for, uh, for offering. Now we have 37 courses to offer. So the pandemic became a blessing. As to my becoming a public person in the line of business, uh, naging host ako ng uh, DZMM, uh, ABS-CBN teleradio program called Radio Negosyo. Kasi madaldal ako, naging guest ako doon. Then until na-realize nung host who happened to be the vice president for radio, Peter Muski, sabi niya, daldal nito, kailangan ko ng co-host. <laughs> then uh, I became his, his co-host. And then the show became mine. So right. it's a 20-year-old uh, engagement. It's, uh, right. I've been, I hosted the show for 20 years. And you can just imagine gano'ng karaming right. tao, specifically micro, small, and medium enterprises na, na interview right. ko in my show. Doc Carl, uh, ano po yung probinsya niya? And by the way, yes, I remember back in the days kasi ako, I, I was supposed to go into dentistry at UP Manila, yung uh, unang target talaga gusto ng parents ko. No? At alam ko, mm-hmm. nung time na yan, 
nursing was somehow even more difficult for us to go in get into uh-huh. that even yung dentistry and other you know medical courses no so naala ko this time na pinipressure pressure talaga ng parents na mag nursing kayo madali man Canada right. abroad etc pero ano nangyari parang nawala yung fad na yan no parang more recently well, hindi, hindi ganoon ka ano no oo eh paano nagkaroon ng oversupply sobrang daming uh-huh. nurses no no all over the country at uh, yung nurses ended up you know finding career somewhere else kasi mm. hindi na sila maabsorb ng ating pub, ng ating health system So, nagkaroon ng glitch doon, Bumag, bumagsak yung enrollment, nawala yung mga yung popularity ng nursing, uh, pero recently bumalik naman siya. It's a cycle, it's always that right. way. No? Dumadami. Okay, oversupply. And, supply, yeah. supply, over and supply. Supply yeah. and demand. Pero you won't believe it, the, the world needs like 5 million nurses by 2030 based right. on the uh, World Nursing Report. So, uh, kailangan talaga lumakas uli yung nursing natin mm-hmm. because we want to not only supply the demands of the country but also of the world and uh, yeah that, that's what we want to Lalo, do. Itong, I mean this pandemic you know the the pressure it has put on our healthcare sector no I, I can imagine and of course nag-aging din yung population so that will also mm-hmm. increase yung burden on on our healthcare system ano pa yung assessment niyo diyan because i remember some of the numbers i saw on this issue of nursing uh you know medyo nakaka-shock yung gaano kababa yung bayad sa mga nurses natin dito, mm-hmm. gaano ka-limited yung mga benefits sa kanila or protection na binibigay at nakita natin marami sa kanila medyo nakakomplain na no? yeah. uh, against yung mga supposed deficiencies of Department of Health. Kayo po bilang isang you know registered nurse, someone who has been uh, involved in helping people to train in that profession, ano po yung basa niyo dito sa issue na yan? Well, I don't want to say na before the pandemic, hindi natin appreciate ang value ng human resource in health. No, like uh, I'm not only talking about nursing. Now it took decades for nursing to get what the law said. Na ang kanyang salary grade is salary grade 15. You know, the midwives na stuck na sila sa salary grade 9. I mean, I'm just talking about salary grades, but yeah, maraming na, na stuck up na sila don. Alam mo, ko konti yung positions for medical technologies to the point na ang graduate right. ng medtech kahit license tinatanggap niya yung pagiging ano, pagiging technician para lang makapasok, mm-hmm. makuha yung plantilla. Worse is in private sector, alam mo naman kung ikaw ospital, gusto mong magbayad ng tama, pero kung ikaw hindi nakakakolekta sa PhilHealth, saan ka na makukuha ng perang pambayad sa Health Human Resource? Uh, gustuhin mo mang ma-retain yung mga tao mo, maski pa anong gawin natin tumbling, maniwala kayo, hindi natin kayang tapatan yung sweldo na ino-offer ng UK and America. No? Talagang pag kinonvert mo yon into do- dollars into peso, nako, you'll be surprised they're getting uh, six digits. Comparably yeah. dito sa atin, ano eh, uh, sa government we're paying our, our nurses salary grade 15 which is like 40 something at the 30 plus 30 plus to to 40 ganun ang range no depending on where you are pero alam mo masakit dito is kwan eh ang major issue dito hindi lang yung salary lalo na yung take home salary the major issue is yung kanilang status most of them are into job order pag sinabi job order that means sila ay contracted lang contractual right. hindi regularized yeah. hindi regularized i mean but they were offered a higher salary, good salary, like $40,000, pero you will have to sign a contract na ikaw ay contracted. Contractual ang status mo. Kaya alam mo ba, nung mag-end yung year, maraming kabado na nurses. No? Dahil uh, yung kanilang contract, hindi pa nare-renew. Eh siyempre, pero nung pumasok ang new year, of course, mm. alam na natin yung paparating ng Omicron, ayun, tumaas na naman ang demand para sa kanila. Pero, mm. I mean, tayo man mismo, kung ang trabaho natin is contractual, nakakontrata ka yes. lang for a period of time na hindi mo alam kung hanggang kailan, eh, there's no security of tenure. Ang benefits are very limited. Uh, at towards the end of uh, last year and in the early part of this year, nasabi ko, bukas na naman kasi yung ano eh. Every year kasi may cap, no? There, there is a right. deployment ban. Like last year, it was raised to 6,000 from what used to be 5,000. Ngayon, right. 7,000. I expect that 7,000 nurses, Filipino nurses, will be chosen by the world and will mm-hmm. be offered good salary by the world. And malaking bagay yon sa ating healthcare system. Yun ang worry ko. And yun, yun talaga. And by the way, um, Richard, I'm, I'm the first in the history of our elections, right. uh, the first nurse and the first midwife to run uh, for the Senate. And, yeah, uh, that, that's why, po, that's why, uh, yun ang understanding ko po, no? And mm-hmm. and I know that one of the senators, <laughs> I think um, uh, Senator Villar has made some colorful comments on on uh-huh. issues related to the nursing for a while. I don't know kung with some fatula, but uh-huh. we can discuss that. But uh-huh. ka, I mean, uh, you're a registered nurse, but you haven't practiced it. Uh, I I did. 
the practice of practice the, it, yeah. the, I did it I did and uh in the definition of the law uh when when you are teaching in the nursing education it's a practice uh -huh. of nursing it's a practice right. of nursing so I am practicing nursing I became I was clinical preceptor you won't believe it naging right. clinical preceptor ako sa National Center for Mental Health I've been teaching psychiatric nursing for many years. Oh, right. Which is yeah. a very, very important issue, lalong-lalo na ngayon. Dahil sa pandemic, mukhang tumataas yung cases ng depression and, and all mm -hmm. sorts of mental, you know... Uh, Anxiety problems. disorders. Yeah. Exactly, yes po. And after this, meron tayong marami sa atin magkakaroon ng post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. Because like we came from a war. No? Parang yep. ganon. Parang, uh, and, and, and things have changed. Masyado in crisis. Crisis kasi by definition will impose an undue burden on our whole being immunity and such burden yeah. and such burden is kwan eh is uh, so, supposed to be self limiting kailan sa sobrang tagal ng exposure natin dito uh, masadong maraming disruptions in the way we live and the way we 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 survive you know and of course the grief the grief of having lost our friends our relatives masado masado tong pandemyang to kaya talagang uh, mabigat ito sa mental health ng maraming tao uh, Doc, uh, Carl, uh, Mark, you can come in as soon as I, I, I'm just trying to get uh, as much dun sa background issue. Sa tingin niyo ba kailangan natin ng specialized programs to deal with almost PTSD? I mean, this is collective grief situation. Lahat yes. sa atin anxious in one way or another, economically anxious, family related uh, anxious. Yung iba gusto mag booster, kailangan ng ibang vaccine hmm. or something anxious. I mean, all of us yeah. have been going through very different kinds of anxiety. Hindi lang one month, two months. Lampas na po sa dalawang taon. Ibang klase na po yeah. ito. No? So Ibang ano po sir ang assessment niyo, uh, Doc Carl, no? as a professional and as also someone who's involved uh, in dealing with the youth, with people on the front line, uh, and you know, a, 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 a person in a position of leadership uh, throughout the years. We, we have to have a major uh, mental health uh, program Mm -hmm. No, not only based on the mental health law that is existing. Right. Um, we we even need, may need a SAR for it. No, you know, you, we we assign a SAR for vaccine for etc. For alam mo, kasi neglected ang mental health uh, problems. No, I mean, pag ikaw nilalagnat, hindi kang para sa ba? Pag ikaw may may LBM, bibigyan ka ng ng uh, kung ano anong gamot, de ba? Pero pag ikaw nagsabi sa magulang mo na uh, na hindi ako makatulog tatlong araw na. Sasabihin lang right. siguro ng nanay mo, eh, kako-computer mo yan. O, di ba? Pag sinasabi mo sa nanay mo siguro, nai, may narinig ako bumubulong-bulong sa akin. Sabi niya, ah, kasi lagi ka naka-earphone. I mean, you know, and uh, stigmatized pa rin. Stigmatized pa rin. How do we so, break that stigma kaya? Kasi meron pa rin malaking stigma talaga eh, sa society it's, it's, natin pagdating sa mental health. And bakit nga may stigma? Yeah, tama, tama si Mark. Bakit nga is this lack of... Uh, education is this lack of appreciation is this yung pamacho culture natin na iano mo na lang yan yung depression na yan ganun uh, what's hindi kasi going siya on? ano behavioral kasi siya mm. hindi siya lagnat na makukuha ng thermometer right. no hindi siya LBM na nakikita mong ipina-flash mo sa toilet no it's it's a it's a very subjective feeling and most of the time na i-ignore na ni-neglect yung symptoms and uh, the public does not understand kung gaano ka debilitating yung ang term eh no yeah. uh, kung gaano siya nakakaapekto sa productivity alam mo uh, maraming naglalakad sa kalye uh, tahimik nakatingin sa kawalan pero hindi mo alam kung saan siya pupunta at hindi nakakapagtaka kung may gagawin siyang from self harm to I mean, you know, affected na yung kanyang activities of daily living it's really a major issue you know pag, pag, pag tayo talaga pinalad at alam ko naman may awa ang Dios at sincere ako sa in doing this uh, we really need to sit down and look at the mental health issues of our of our people. Alam mo, ito pa ang pinakamasaklap dito. Uh, kung, kung kayo nasa probinsya, ako, nandito ako sa Cordillera, uh, siguro magtanong ako ng sampung taon dito, tanungin ko kung nasa ng psychiatrist dito. I don't know kung may mamemention silang pangalan. I mean, pero magtanong ako ng obstetrician dito at pediatrician dito, sigurado meron. O dentist dito, sigurado meron. Pumunta ako siguro sa butika dito at magtanong ako ng thoracin or ng uh, any common medication for mental illness na, na high in maintenance, ano? long term, ay baka magulat ako dito na hindi siya available even in some major drug stores here. Pero ito, this is the worst part. Uh, may hotline ba tayo to help people about this? Diba? You know, mental health is, may catharsis kami tinatawag eh. It's when you open up to someone na sometimes 
hindi yung friend mo, hindi yung family members mo because of the stigma, because of the shame, yung hiya or baka hindi rin naman wala rin mo maitutulong sa akin yung kapatid ko, baka lalo lang bumigat ang dala hindi ng nanay ko. Pero wala kang mapuntahan eh. At saka pag sinabi mong galing ka sa psychiatrist at uh, sinabi mo sa kaibigan mong ay nagkonsulta ako sa dentist, walang problema yon Pero pag sinabi mo sa kaibigan mong nagkonsulta ka sa psychiatrist, expect mo yung reaction na hindi as the same as, as uh, nagkonsulta ka sa dentist or sa pediatrician or sa obstetrician. The thing is, the society will have to be educated on the value of mental health. Kasi alam nyo yung mga kasama natin sa opisina na hindi maganda ang performance. Di ba? Yung kasama mong sa trabaho na mainit ang ulo or laging absent or laging late or even estudyante na dati-rati may socialization yung school. Ngayon nakaharap sa computer. Di ba? Ang dami, mabigat masyado to. At sabi ko nga, uh, ako tatlo yung kinukonsider kong biggest uh, impact of the pandemic. Number one is on the mental health. Okay? Ang second ko is on the environment, no? At ang ang pangatlo ko is on on learning, no? Ay, yun talaga ang major concerns ko. Halimbawa, sabihin ko, pag-usapan natin ng mental health, ang laking issue nito. Pero alam mo, kung titimbangin natin yung masks, face shields, PPE, uh, syringes that this pandemic cost Mother Earth, nako, you wouldn't imagine how much waste we have created. Alam mo, yung 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 na-mention ko pa kanina, yung, yung, yung other concerns. No? After this pandemic, mas marami pa tayong haharapin ng mga issues. Yung learning, uh, yung, yung naging gap to, to learning. Alam mo, uh, yung, yung, yung mga bata, natuto ba talaga sila magsulat? Yung kinder to grade 1 to grade 2, natuto ba sila magsulat? Natuto ba sila magbasa? Uh, kapano yon Yung graduate, meron ba sila ng competencies? Di ba? Lalo na yung mga skilled uh, profession like kami sa nursing. Yung medicine, maru- mag- mag- kumusta sila bilang mga doktor? Eh, tumuloy naman, may graduate. So, ang dami-dami natin kailangan harapin. Kaya nga, ang ako, uh, alam ko pupunta tayo mamaya doon, yun yung, yun yung nagtulak sa akin kung ba't ako nandito sa magulong mundo ng politika. Right, Pero right. I, don't, I don't wanna be called uh, politician, no? but I, I just wanna be in right. public service because I'm a professional, you know? Yun nga, kaya gusto namin abusuhin yung side mo na ano eh, yung public servant mo bago natin pag-usapan yung politika because that has mm-hmm. its That's correct. Right. Oh. Uh, uh, yes, at, at saka, Richard, if I may just say, yes, no? ang, ang, ang problema kasi sa kultura natin is marami tayong ayaw pag-usapan sa dining table. Mm. Okay, like, have you ever talked about sex education on a dining table? No. <laughs> That's the last place diba? you think about it. Uh, diba? Pero kita mo, I mean, basic lang, basic anatomy and physiology. Comfortable ba yung mga babae na nagminarke? Yung, yung first menstruation. Were they prepared for it? Napag-usapan ba sa bahay yan na, oy, uh, anak, 12 years old ka na, by the time you're 13 or 14, magkakaroon ka ng menstruation. Hindi natin napapag-usapan yun. Or some of the guys, for example, we, we were never asked if we want circumcision or not. No? Diba? At a certain age. Kasi marami tayong, uh, marami tayong tabu dun sa dining table where family gather to have a good conversation, a family conversation. Uh, yung mental health, ganun din eh. Um, and sometimes, most of the time, uh, if you're not okay, you're not comfortable to even express or show people that you're not okay. And what we don't realize is that it's okay to be not okay. Merong you shame, know? Eh, no? They, they feel it's sometimes... Like- Oh, may shame. Oh, right. in, in yung Korean Netflix ba yan? It's okay. To <laughs> get a title. That's a title. It's a, it's a beautiful title because it's a, it's a message to the world. In, in fact, na it's okay to be not okay. In fact, ano namin yan? It's a, it's a mantra. Right. It's a right. mantra in public health. I mean, in, in, in mental health. no? That it's okay to be not okay. And someone out there is willing to listen to you. Pero ito matindi dito, Richard and Mark. When somebody comes to you, pag may pumunta sa'yo at nag-express na hindi siya okay, what are you bound to give? We are bound to give advice. Right? We are bound to give advice. And But did you know that advice is not therapeutic? Advising someone is not gonna help. Dapat Pero ilang, makinig lang. You just have to listen. Makin, you just yeah. have to listen. In fact, pag ikaw, minsan, tagapin natin ito, practical to. Pag may nagsabi sa'yo yung kaibigan mo na, Tol, may problema ako eh. Eh, wala yan. Tara, inum lang tayo. Tara, tapi tayo. Ganun lang. What, what do you do? You ignore. You belittle the feelings. 
Okay. Pero sasabihin pa, tapos nagsabi, ah, kasi naman ganito. Ikaw naman kasi, ganyan, ganyan. Ang ending, nasisi ka pa. I mean, it's not common. Unlike kung may lagnat ka, alam na natin pag may lagnat ka, magpunas ka. Uminom kang paracetamol, uminom kang maraming tubig para huwag ka ma-dehydrate. Alam na yon. Pero itong part na to, marami sa atin mali ang approach. Okay? And advising seems to be what is what is most accessible doon sa mga taong nilapitan. Pero ang dapat doon, actually, hayaan mo siyang magsalita na magsalita, hayaan mo siyang umiyak, hayaan mo siyang sumigaw kung kailangan. But don't tolerate violence, don't tolerate self-harm. Okay? Pero ang maganda dito, pag nag-express ang taong yan, hayaan mo siyang mag-discover kung ano yung options and alternatives and solutions na available sa kanya. Kasi the moment you advise, you reduce the empowerment of that person. Okay. Hindi mo siya in-enable eh. Pero gano karami, gano ka, I mean, recall, pag may lumapit sa iyong kaibigan, anong usual response natin? We give advice. Hmm. ba? Diba? So it's also nice that we're talking about this because sa dami ng nanonood sa inyo, isang paalala lang po. Pag may lumapit sa inyo, just be the shoulder to cry on. Just It's okay not to advise. It's okay just to bear witness. To listen. Right? Yeah. To be there. Just don't to be there even, for the person. Don't yeah. even advise. And you know, if the person doesn't want to talk, doesn't want to talk, at sabi niya, ayoko may kausap. O di, huwag ba ko kausapin? Dito lang ako. Because it's the presence. Your presence in that situation is a very reassuring presence that somebody is there to listen. For all you know, later on, pag sabi niya, ayoko, umalis ka, ayoko may kausap. Diyan sabi mo, okay, dito lang ako tol. Hindi ako alis. Magugulat ka dyan, mamaya. Iiyak na yan. Mamaya, mag-open up na yan. Hayaan mo lang. Ang tawag doon, catharsis. Gagaan yung pakiramdam noon. At hindi kailangan sa session na yun natapos ang problema. Pwede inilabas lang niya yun. Right. Pero ang kailangan nating explore, anong gusto mong mangyari? Hmm. Anong pwede mong magawa? May roadmap. Mm-hmm. Oo, oh, may roadmap ka. Saan ka pupunta? Ano mm-hmm. gagawin mo? And by, by the way, I want to take advantage of this. Of course. If somebody, if somebody expresses, uh, an in, I mean, you know, an intent to harm self, mm-hmm. commit something that would harm the self, you have to take it seriously. Mm-hmm. At kailangan alam natin kung hanggang saan yung kaya nating pakinggan because at certain point, kailangan ma-refer mo siya sa professional. professional. O kung sa may lagnat, hindi kaya ng paracetamol. Right. Kasi hindi na gumagana yung paracetamol. Hindi na pwedeng punas-punas. Hindi na pwedeng tubig-tubig at saka Skytrex at Royal. Hindi na kaya. Di ba? Kailangan mo sa i-refer sa professional. Right. And, and there are professionals out there. There are trained psychologists. You know, there are psychiatrists who are trained to deal with these kinds of situations. And some mm-hmm. of them are biochemical. Ha? Hindi pwedeng yes. puro conversation. Right. Because there are, there are medications that can be prescribed. Right. Para... May imbalance dun sa mga certain chemicals, hormones sa body. Hormones, nila. yeah. yeah. So you need to actually, have intervention. Actually, yung hormonal changes na nangyari sa atin ngayon is because of the, you know, the disruption. Right. You know, right. Ang, ang hor- huwag ka lang matulog ng isang gabi. Sa yep. totoo lang, mapuyat ka lang. Yung hormones mo affected na tomorrow. Eh how yep. much more ngayon? Talagang sobrang dami nating disruptions in the way we live that even our hormonal, uh, you know, our endocrine system eh, na-disrupt din. Right. Uh, doc, uh, what is the state naman of the profession? Uh, dun sa uh, supply side naman, yung uh, oh. people are getting the training in psychiatry, in in psychology, uh, people doing therapy. Kamo sa naman yung side na yan? That's, that's the sad part. Mm. We 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 still lack the specialist for it, especially in this time and age. We lack it. I wish that nursing will be quick, will be fast on developing uh, the psychiatric nurse specialist. Kasi may mga nurse specialization program sa ibang bansa na dito sa atin sa Pilipinas wala pa because you know nurses are trained for therapeutic communication meron kami ang ilang units of psychiatric nursing nagrotate kami sa mga psychiatric setting pero yung specialization in it hindi pa siya in in place but there are organizations that are already pushing it uh, meron tayong mga psychologist kaya lang alam mo ang psychology as a profession very delicate uh, they have to show practice they have to have uh, parang apprenticeship so that they can take the board. From psychometrician, yung nagbibigay lang ng mga psychological test, they level up to become you know, psychologists, they have to take a master's degree. Uh, kasi very, very dangerous ang mental health. Uh, sa some doctors naman who would like to proceed with psychiatry, uh, they have to uh, parang a postgraduate ano nila yan, um, specialization 
until they become diplomats and fellow of uh, the Psychological Society and Psychiatric Society of the Philippines. May mga specialization. And not every doctor uh, is actually trained to deal with mental health, mental illness. Actually, not every nurse, not every graduate of psychology actually is, yeah. is enti entitled to it. Yung licensure, ang kokonti ang kumukuha, mababa pa yung passing. So ang aking ng proposal dyan is we have to provide for more scholarships for them. Mm, right. More scholarship, right. more, you know, more encouraging yeah. programs para we take that road. Oh, uh, like that 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Carl, uh, I, again, sorry for cutting you because we, we can go on hmm. forever on this, but of course we hmm. have other questions for you to lalong lalong sure. that. We're, we're talking in the context of elections. But the other thing I want to talk about is this. Uh, oh, for me, this is a myth because I've seen the numbers with WHO and other relevant uh, numbers. Para din natin sinasabi ang mga Pilipino ay masayahin. Tignan mo yung mga surveys ng subjective happiness, mataas tayo. But actually, if you look at a lot of more uh, robust surveys, yung uh, quality of life index, for instance, uh, usually in Pilipinas doesn't ra rank that well because you're looking at more objective methods of assessing yung, uh, yung well-being ng tao at in fact, if you look at, for instance, cases of suicide, for instance, or, or anxiety-related uh, disorders, etc., medyo mataas ang Pilipinas at tumataas ito in recent years, no? with, of course, with digitization of the economy, yung stressful yung lifestyle natin, etc. Uh, so for me, for me, malaking myth yan, which I think is preventing us from having a proper conversation about this issue. And, 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 and takot ko is this can get out of control if we don't do something about this false myth of the happy Filipino no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, happiness kasi is highly subjective. You know, uh, I have to tell you that go to the squatters area, you'll find a lot of people there smiling, laughing, you know, enjoying life compared with those in, you know, in fenced uh, subdivision na parang ang lulungkot ng mga bahay nila, no? Um, I, not, not to compare, but happiness kasi is highly subjective. Pero alam mo, uh, ako, what, what bothers me is some, are, are some data that are available. Like for example, uh, yung the PISA, akala mo ang PISA, hindi lang niya measure yung, ano eh, yung uh, English, uh, yung language, mathematics, and science uh, capability of our children. Meron siyang measure na yung failure. Ano, uh, yung mga ganon. And uh, do you know that 70 like 70 plus percent of our children studied at the time were afraid of failure. And this explains why uh, not many Filipinos are entrepreneurial. You know, why, why is my answer related to it? Because um, even academic performance is affected by those. And dami namin natin consider na data, but you know, we don't want to be paralyzed by the analysis of those, of those data. But at the end of the day, our economics, for example, are, are the poverty level, you know, and, and other indicators are very challenging to interpret. But it all boil, boils down to, to poverty. For example, uh, did you know that the malnutrition rate in the country is very high? Like one third of our children are malnourished. And affects your brain development. It affects your brain very development. Important. And I, I'd like to trace that back to the fact that Malnutrition did not start at birth. Actually, it's intrauterine malnutrition. And, uh, you know, the development of the brain was fast, is fastest, no, actually, in, in the intrauterine life and in the fetal period. Pero kita mo, pag hindi siya na nurture, then we send children to school. More than 50% of the children did not have a good breakfast. Think about it. And 25% of schools in this country do not even have potable water. So, so now provide classrooms now. Then we blame the educational system. So, anong gusto kong sabihin sa yon is we have to go to where the, the the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem is really poverty. You know, um, people not being able to support their minimum basic needs. No, which is why I like really I like my president. Because uh, MBN guy, eh, minimum basic needs guy si Isko Moreno, no? na to the point na ang gusto niya makita is yung what's most basic. Like for example, housing. No? 
housing, alam mo, merong tinatawag na Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you still remember your psychology class. Self-actualization yung pinakamataas. Self-actualization nasa taas, pero nasa baba nun is, di ba, the physiologic needs. Food sex, needs. kung ganun. <laughs> uh, yung ganun, di ba? Pero look at this. How, housing is basic need. Right. Ang sunod dun is safety and security. Right. House, housing provides safety and security. Ang sunod dun, love and belongingness. Where do you belong? Where do you feel Supply. love? At home. Ang susunod dun is self-esteem. Self-esteem is self-worth. Diba? The house where you live provides for that self-worth. And self-actualization is when you maximize your potential. Yung five levels na yon na hit siya. Now, let's go to food, for example. Ah, kaya ako, sa totoo lang, Richard, the, the root cause of all of this data, whatever you look at, is poverty. Mm. You see? Uh, masaya sila, but the authenticity of that happiness it's, is it's, something in question. Yep. Yep. Alam mo, iba kasi yung contentment, iba yung you being provided for your needs. They may just feel contented. Kasi huwag natin kakalimutan, may learned helplessness. You yeah. know? When you learn that helplessness, it's a theory, you know? Learned helplessness is you feel helpless and therefore you accept whatever the, the circumstances are. Then, Medyo fatalistic na. Tanggapin mo na lang. Eh, Tanggapin mo na lang. Yeah. And remember, the bahala na is mm. bathala na. The root word of bahala na is bathala na. It's Leave a surrender. It yeah. Leave, Leave it, it to faith. Yeah. Oh, kaya, kaya ang dami-dami nating issue. And I think, but you, but, you know, for, for 20 years of my life, I, I've been on radio, and you know naman ang target ng radio, ng DZMM, is really that. Right. But, you know, I I've, I've felt happy for the past 20 years that every Saturday, I'm giving them hope. Mm. You know, mm. when, when you give people that hope, they create the vision. You know, that right. vision is the ideal state of the future. When they have the vision, you know, if you know where you're going, you may find a way to get there. Mm. Yun yun eh. Pero without that vision, where will you go? Sabi mo kanina, narinig mo ko sa motivational speaker. I was asked right. by, by a foreign, in a, in a foreign talk show and asked me, Carl, how, is, how do you motivate? And sabi mm. ko, you know, motivation is simple. You just have to, to connect two dots. First mm. dot is the dot of the present and that present is you make the person feel and appreciate that my present is blessed. I am blessed. It's a beautiful life. I'm alive. And the next point you have to identify is the ideal state of the future. There's a beautiful future that awaits you. And what is the shortest distance between two points? It's a straight line. Straight line. Right? Yeah. The problem with many people is that they don't value what they have Mm. And they're not happy because they're comparing themselves with other people. Right. And when, you're, when you start comparing yourself with other people, you will be too busy counting your own blessing because you're counting somebody else's blessing. I mean, right? uh, when you're too busy counting the blessings of other people, you don't have time anymore to count your own. Lalo ngayon sa age of social media, my goodness, lahat ang gaganda nila, lahat na hap filter, lahat may bagong kotse, that creates anxiety, right? The display culture. The display culture. Ah, yep. ngayon, pa, yung motivation, the ideal future that comes ahead, that, that awaits you, mahirap i-define ngayon kasi the uncertainty is very high. Right. Okay? Now, how do you motivate them? You have to start with now. What do you have now? Your glass is half full rather mm. than half empty, but it's the same glass. But mm. I want people to see that, you know, I don't just tell people, hey, your glass is half full, not half empty. I tell them, hey, your glass is refillable. You know, your glass is bottomless. Is yeah, bottomless. It's bottomless. It's bottomless <laughs> refillable. I still know. You know, when you give people hope, of course, ang right. faith walang problema eh. Ang faith uh -oh. magaling tayo diyan eh. Pero yung uh -oh. hope minsan nawawala tayo diyan eh. Kaya nga sabi mo, eh kahit naman sinong iboto mo, pareho rin 'yun. Yeah. What are you yung sense of agency, mo? no? Yung sense of agency very important 'yun that you yeah. can make it different. That if you uh -oh. get certain things in line, meron kang impact na magagawa sa mundo. No? I think that sense of agency is minsan kulang yes. sa ating kultura. Yeah. Actually, ko kumplitohin ko yung tatlo. Sinabi ko na yung faith, we're very good at it. Yung right. hope, it's something we can actually derive from or, appreciating what is in the present. It's really appreciation. Appreciative inquiry. Get deep into your blessings. What you stand for, what you will wake up for tomorrow. At yun may pangatlo yung love. Faith, hope, and love. Tumasan. Hmm. <laughs> yung love. Tumasan tayo sa love. <laughs> that's 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 love. Especially now. <laughs> Alam mo, yeah. that's where Richard, that's where the hope is coming from. Right. You know, uh, you know I, I don't want to sound very academic, but it's really basic. When you have faith, hold on to it. 
find mm. that hope somewhere hope comes from you know the the the, the possibilities you know mm. the impossible looks impossible before it's done mm. you know and the third is love you know don't forget that you feel love and that you can give love mm. you know there are two things that drive people to to action one is fear the second is love lahat ng ginagawa natin could only come from fear or love now ask yourselves what would you choose that you act for love or you act for fear i would love to act for love mm. and then wake up in the morning and ask yourself para kanino ka bumabangon well it's a coffee commercial but that's derived from a beautiful theory called appreciative inquiry right. you know you discover your life giving force ang tawag namin doon it's right. your life giving force ano yung nasa buhay mo na dahilan kung bakit ka bumabangon then mm. just think about it and then you will be energized You know, you have to discover what you have and what you value most. Then proceed to design the future and make sure that you accept the fact that your destiny, the destiny is yours. Right. You know? uh, I really love this one. <laughs> therapy tayo ata tayo na libre. Meron pa kayo na likod and all. This is, uh, this, I really feel common. But I want to talk about another thing, uh, Doc, uh, Carl, no? Entrepreneurship, it's something you mentioned a while ago. It's something very integral to sa background. Nyo, and I hope this is something that you want to bring into public governance at some point, yung sense of innovation, sense of pushing the boundaries, bringing new ideas and new models of dealing with problems. Paano kayo pumasok dyan sa entrepreneurship? Because a while ago, nakita ko bakit kayo nag-nursing. Hindi ko maintindi ba't din yung gustong nursing because I can see that uh, inherent instinctive compassion in you no as as, as someone uh, uh, that you see in anyone within the medical profession so mukhang talaga nurse by heart kayo but at the same yeah. time you're also an entrepreneur no you know how to talk you you give the good motivational speech i can attest to that at saka i'm sure our audience na ma appreciate din nila yan how did you get into that at bakit mahalaga yan sa pilipinas well i uh part of the vision is the comfortable life the life that you are mm-hmm. in full control of You know, I have always loved to be working for my own dream. And that can only be achieved if you are an entrepreneur. Because if you are an employee, you are working for somebody else's dream. Diba? So, and ako no, nung nasa university ako, I was a permanent faculty. I was offered deanship at the age of 26. Was going to 27. I would have been the youngest dean probably. But you know, when I realized that I was working for somebody else's dream, And that the direction of my vision is not heading there. So because there's nothing wrong being permanent faculty. There's nothing wrong being dean. These are very prestigious status. But if it's not something where I want to go, then I should change the course. And I took the road less traveled by. And to me, entrepreneurship is it's a very challenging life. No, it's, it's a very challenging journey. Alam mo, ako nga, sa totoo lang, yung mga gamblers, yung mga sumasali, yung mga addicted to, to gambling, I want to talk to them. I want to teach them that, hey, you're already risk takers. All, all I have to do is to put a little science and call it calculated risk taking. Because if you... My method. Calcul- my, me- my, my, my math, no? It, it's a beautiful life. I, I'll tell you, it's a beautiful life. It's a challenging life. It's, it's a life that you're in control of. You know, it's, it's a life full of opportunities beyond limits. It's a life that challenges creativity and innovation. You know, it's always all about continuously improving what's already there. I'll tell you, it's a wonderful life. And uh, I discovered it by, by necessity. You know, necessity is the mother of inventions, right? So I, I thought... Marami that, alaga, marami alaga. <laughs> no, I thought I will, I know, I would... Uh, um, I will not be able to reach what I want to reach just by counting the salaries uh, and doubling my income and making, you know, uh, sidelines, then I realized, wait, let me put up something. Then until I realized that by doing business, you're building a legacy. Like, hello, Carl Balita Review Center is Carl Balita Review Center. Kaya ko siyang ipamana sa anak ko. No? Yung, yung PhD ko, yung master degree ko, yung licenses ko, di ko pwede ipamana sa anak ko. Pero yung brand ko, yung legacy of the business that I build, that I'm building, that I built, oh, pwede sa mapunta sa kanila. So, it's, it's a beautiful option. 
And and Doc Carl, ano masasabi niyo dito sa entrepreneurship culture sa Pilipinas? Anong kulang ano pwede natin improve? What improvements have already been undertaken based sa observation niyo? Uh, we have to improve the way where the ease and cost of doing business. You know why? Kung makikita ng isang bata na madali lang ang buhay ng magulang niya sa pagninegosyo, susunod siya sa yapak nun eh. Alam mo yung kapitbahay mo na nag-abroad, na nakapagpatayo ng bahay, yun ang nag-motivate sa'yo para makapagpatayo ka rin ng bahay. I mean, para mag-abroad ka rin, para makapagpatayo ka rin ng bahay. Uh, bakit yung mga magsasaka, yung mga anak nila ayaw maging magsasaka? Nakita kasi ang hirap-hirap ng buhay nila. No? Pero kung makikita natin na yung uh, magulang mong magsasaka ay nakakukuha ng tulong sa gobyerno, gumagamit ng technology, nagdidilig ng palaya niya, ang ginagamit niya ay, ah, nag-fertilize ng palaya niya, ginagamit drone. Diba? <laughs> o nag, nagdidilig ng farm niya, ginagamit drone. Parang Tapos, vlogger yun ah, may drone. Parang gano'n, may drone. Eh, yun, yun ang sa ibang bansa, di ba Richard? O kaya, ngayon, pag ang nakita niya na yung, yung parents niya, nagninegosyo, nagtitinda sa palengke, pero ang comfortable ng buhay, hindi masyadong problema You know, the ease and cost of doing business, pag napadali natin, will be very encouraging for the millennials and the Gen Z. And you know, the beauty of the Gen Zs and the millennials being entrepreneurs is that you are purpose-driven. Not my generation, your generation is a purpose-driven generation. Malalim kayo eh. Matindi kayo sa purpose because you are a very informed generation. And you know what? Ang dapat nating improve dito is on how we are enabling our micro-enterprises, which is 89% of the businesses. You know why? If the 89% of the businesses are perceived to be enabled and supported by the government, oh my, I'll tell you, the young people will choose to be entrepreneurs and contributory to the growth of our economy from in the countryside, in the, in, in the rural areas. Yun ang dapat nating improve. Uh, and education, nandiyan na sa K-12. Eh. Ang entrepreneurship is now in the K-12 curriculum. Right. Diba? Itanong ko lang din, uh, Dr. Carl, kasi diba nakasama yun dun sa parang agenda ni Yorme na yeah. gusto niyang patulungin mm. yung sa S- uh, M- MSMEs, yung uh, mm. DICT, yung DTI, mm. and at the same time yung DOST. So uh, ano ba mga pwedeng gawin ng mga ahensya na yun and nung, mm. nung national government na din to help our uh, small and medium enterprises, yung mga ating mga negosyante? Ako susulong ko yung Micro Enterprise Commission. It's not to add up another bureaucracy. Pero you know, parang sa orchestra yan, kailangan may may hawak ng baton. You see? Wala siyang ispuproduce na sound, pero siya yung mag-orchestrate. So it becomes the bridge of the micro enterprises to become small. Kaya pag small na siya, tsaka mo na siya galawin. Ang tawag ko nga dito, inolime tanghere, the micro. Don't touch the micro. Just support them. Alam mo, ang ganda nung platform na yan ni Yorme kasi uh, pag pinagsama-sama mo sa isang agency yung, yung mga yon binanggit niya yung, yung DTI, of course, sila naman ang talagang premier dyan. Ang DOST, napakaraming technology available for them. Ang DITC because of the digitalization and you know, yung e-commerce, etc. Nandyan ang Department of Agriculture. Huwag natin kalimutan yon Even, alam mo yung OFWs, meron silang, meron silang OWA, meron silang ang daming agencies who could help them. And the private sector. Alam nyo, pag na-orchestrate yung micro-enterprise commission, tapos nandyan ang financial institution that will provide them capital, tapos nandyan ang technology, nandyan ang market support ng DTI, I'll tell you, ang gagaling natin, Mark, ang gagaling ng Pilipino, ang innovative natin. Creative ang, ang kulang lang yung central organizing principle. No? Kasi alam natin yeah. sa Japan and other countries. Marami rin silang MSME. Pero ang ginagawa ng government is uh, pinapasok sila dun sa supply chain ng mga mas malalaking company. So you have a yes. situation whereby halos yung sobrang malilit ng company mo works almost with Toyota or it works Correct. with Honda. So at the end of the day, it's an organic process kung saan all these small, medium, and massive conglomerates of Japan work together for for national development. So we have yeah. these models in other countries. So ang, ang kulang lang talaga yung parang some, a coach to bring all of this talent together. Kung yeah. katama siya, sabi niya, andun yung mga talents, pero yung coach ang kailangan to just bring them together and that's where papasok yung government. Correct. The baton. The baton. Yung sasabihin, lalapitan, tapos sabihin, oh, dito ka. By the way, I have biases, ha? Na, na industry. Number one, bias ako sa technology startup. Nako. 
Yan ang the, the language of the future is technology. Fintech. The now and the future. Yeah, papunta tayo dyan. Number two, bias ako sa social enterprise. Yung mga negosyong sustainable, uh, concerned with the environment, and so on. Bias ako sa service business. Alam mo yung mga, sa totoo lang, you won't believe it. Ang kinikita nung nagmamanicure at yung nag-home service ng massage spa, ay, maniwala ka. Magulat ka, natalo pala yung clerk sa banko. <laughs> yeah. Again, yung, may, lalo maraming tip. Oh. Oo. Yun ang gusto kong, ano, yun ang gusto kong palakasin. Kasi, yun yung nasa grassroots. No? Um, maganda na yung may project tayo dating, one town, one product. Di ba sa Thailand, may ganyan. One town, one product. Itong munisipyong to, ito lang ang gagawin niya. ba? Diba? Ginawa ni Mang Inasal yan. Ha? Meron siyang inampo na isang third class municipality or fourth class municipality in in ano in uh, Iloilo. Alam mo, gagawin lang. Gagawa lang sila ng barbecue oh. stick. Ay, 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 stick. Oh, yeah. oh, diba? Special edition yung... talaga. Oh, alam mo, yung, yung community na yun, wala silang ginawa kundi barbecue stick. Alam mo, nage-export na ngayon ng barbecue stick. <laughs> Ang daming... <laughs> Ang daming opportunities talaga. Alam mo, ang kailangan lang kasi yung yung galing doon sa sektor na yon. Alam mo bakit si Yorme magaling sa uh, programs para sa mahirap? Eh, Diyos ko, sino bang masihirap pa sa kumain ng pagpag? Naranasan niya yun eh. Alam nyo, saan ba ako galing? Yung sektor ko, galing po akong health sector. Galing po ako education sector. Galing ako sa micro sector. Yung negosyo ko, Richard, you won't believe it. I started with a table in Morita just a table. Right, I rented right. a, a table space in one one of my friend's company. Doon ako naglagay. I had one staff na tagasagot ng phone. I have one staff na tagabigay ng flyer sa tapat ng PRC. And look at what I have done. I have spread this business 120 branches all over the country. Origin stories. Uh, origin story. Now, now, Sir Carl, now let's transition into the meat of the discussion in terms of the election <laughs> process. Can we talk about how you and Yorme got to know each other? When was the first time you got to hear about him or meet him, have a proper conversation about him? And what led you to... So you're doing very well uh, in the realm of public education. You're doing very well in the realm of entrepreneurship. Uh, we're very aware of that. You have touched many lives. You have inspired many people with your speeches, with your uh, optimism. At Mark, mamaya pag-usapan natin, pinapuno niyo daw yung buong Colosseum daw. Eh, diba? <laughs> na I mean, that, that arena, exactly. So it takes certain level of charisma, right? And, and, and passion to, to make that happen. But alam natin yung politika natin is a very, very contentious arena. And some would even say, ano to eh? this is a snake lace. This is a very <laughs> treacherous terrain. No? So why would you uh, try? Bakit ka sumabak sa ganitong <laughs> talagang masakit sa ulo? Na issue? And in what way maybe Isko played a role in convincing you doing that? I, I, I know why in myself because I've talked to him. But I, know, I want our audience to understand bakit po kayo. Uh, ay sumabak dito sa magulong mo. Well, I, I, I've known uh, Yorme when he was vice mayor of Manila. Inilapit ko sa kanya isang batang may biliary atresya. You know, it's a condition na kailangang operan sa Taiwan and we were raising like 3.5 million. Uh, it's because of my kids who were really appealing. Magbenta daw kami ng kotse, magbenta daw kami ng properties para matulungan yung bata. So sabi ko, hindi kailangan yan. We look for, for resources. No? We did some fundraising, etc. Uh, pinakilala ko kay, kay Yorme, uh, binigyan niya ng 1 million, nag-raise kami, umabot kami ng 2.5 million, pero hindi natin kaya kasi we were raising 3.5 billion. So, balik ako sa kanya, sabi ko, eh, hindi namin magagamit yung donation mo kasi hindi namin na-raise yung 3.5. Sabi niya, ilan pa ba kulang? Kaku 1 million pa. Sabi niya, sige, pagpuntahin mo sa akin. Then he sponsored 2 million. That boy now is a 7-year-old boy. Doon ako humanga. Pero I, I had been watching Yorme's... Uh, performance because I happen to have my main headquarters in Manila and uh, I admired him and on what he did during the pandemic. I mean, as a health professional, nakita ko yung ospital niyang pinatayo, nakita ko yung bagong ospital ng Maynila. My God, pag nakita mo, mahiya yung lobby ng St. Luke sa Quezon City sa ganda. <laughs> mahiya yung mga hotels. Ay, wag kayang ganyan. Mga QC. I'm surprised if I'm in St. Luke sa ganong kaganda. Mahal naman kasi doon. Eh, pero yung ibibigay mo ng libre, no? ibang klase, no? So tapos nakita ko lahat yung ginagawa niya, yung road, yung lights, yung beautification, yung Metropolitan Theater, for example, na alam mo yung, yung area na yon na pinaganda niya. Sabi ko, um, wow, I, I wowed ako. Tapos ito, nung lumapit sa akin ng mga doktor para itulak akong tumakbo, ang mga nurses, mga midwives, 
uh, I rejected them. Pero when Doc Willie called me na, then Yorme called me na. At sabi lang sa akin ni Yorme, sabi niya gusto niya makausap ang pamilya ko kasi yung trabida nga yung pamilya ko dyan. Ang sabi lang niya sa mga anak ko over speakerphone is, ano eh, mga anak, hiramin namin ang tatay niyo ng six years. May aayusin lang kami sa gobyerno. A very ko, Richard. Anak hmm. kita, sinabihan ka ng gano'n. Hiramin ako for six years. May aayusin sa gobyerno para sa kanila din. Alam mo, it was a miracle of that evening na my family who used to discourage me uh, became my family who will be who, who supported me. And even my wife. My wife is a pediatrician. Very conservative, no? Pero pumayag siya because we really felt na something can be done. Na we can, I can do something. My Doc Willie connection din pala. Eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oo. Yeah. I, I, Dr. Willie was, was quoted in saying na ako lang yung major supporter niya when he ran for senator. And right. we did not know each other before that. I, well, I watched him on TV. Pero right. I, I found him. I looked for him and offered my help. Sabi ko, Dr. Right. Willie, I need your help. And that's where I, I brought Dr. Willie in my in my classes, big classes. And I campaigned for him. If, if, if I had enough resources at that time, baka naging senador si Doc Willie. Oh. Yeah, malapit na eh. Malapit na rin. Oh. Ah, malapit na oh. rin siya. Oh. Almost there. And, 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 and Doc Carl, again, we'll go to you shortly uh, specifically on the issue of what you want to do in the Senate. But, but hmm. para sa'ng ko kay Isko, no? he's, he's very much surrounded the people in the medical profession. What's going on there? Is, it, is this because he, he believes in a technocratic, evidence-based, approach to governance what is there para may doc willie anjan ka di ba i mean like i can mm-hmm. see a vice mayor ng manila di ba mm-hmm. so what's going it's, on there it's buhay and kabuhayan kind of thing he alam niya na magaling siya sa kabuhayan i mean you know hindi siya ekon- um, hindi siya economist pero kita niyo naman ginawa niya sa manila di ba manila zoo magulat kami ganun di ba in the middle of the pandemic partida pa yon ha pero yung buhay kasi is you have to trust life to the professionals You know, pero alam mo, ang bilhin niya sa akin talaga nung tumawag siya. Hindi nga yung health ang push niya sa akin. Ang push niya sa akin, Carl, alagaan mo yung maliliit na negosyo. Kasi sabi nga niya, itong, batang to, itong taong to, bata pa ako, pinakikinggan ko na to sa radyo. Eh. I mean, you know, alam niya kung paano ko tulungan yung maliliit. At saka nakakatawa yan. Ha? Minsan tatawag yan sa akin, magre-refer lang. Na, oh, Carl, i-guess mo naman itong magpapansit dito sa tondo. Mga ganun siya, nagre-refer siya sa akin ng mga guest para ma-promote. Uh, buhay at kabuhayan. Uh, that that must be the reason why uh, we're, 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 he's surrounded by people like us. And you're right, no? Alam mo, yung Yorme, nakilala natin, may humility siya to listen to the professionals. And uh, very evidence-based. You know, very data-driven ang kanyang mga policy. Alam mo, yung pinresent niyang 10-year plan, uh, yung kanyang 10-point agenda, nung pinresent niya, I was there when yeah. we were finalizing it. Alam mo, ang tanong niya sa, sa team, Can you please double check on the data? Ayoko ng sumablay tayo sa data. Make sure that all of these data are factual. Fact yeah, fact, fact check. check. At kaya maski busi, I mean, we can even cite the source of all these data. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, napansin ko. Yun. So ngayon, <laughs> kamusta po so far ang experience niyo from from the moment you have entered the race? How is the election process treating you so far? Although medyo malapit na yung formal election process na magsimula. Mm-hmm. Well, the listening tour did us a great mm-hmm. favor. Um, talagang it led us to understand and appreciate the needs and the wants and the aspirations of the Filipino people. Hindi lang naman kasi pwedeng puro needs, may aspirations sila. No? And that gave us also the chance to be connected to them. Uh, I'm learning a lot, even more. Alam mo, ang conclusion ko, the wisdom of the poor is the solution to our problem. Yeah, there is such a thing as the wisdom of the poor. Uh, I don't want to call them poor because they are just labeled to be poor. But as a matter of fact, they're so rich with solutions to, the, to their current concern. Hindi lang siguro talaga naiintindihan. But it takes an Isko Moreno, an, you know, uh, uh, someone from there. And it takes some professionals like us to really connect the dots of what can be done. Matagal lang kasi natin pinag-uusapan yung problema eh. Ang problema, tinambayan kasi natin yung problema eh. Hmm. So kailangan huwag natin tambayan. Let's let's look for the solution. Or may mga tao na nagbe-benefit dun sa problema. Ay naalala ko dun sa Actually, isang talk namin ni Isko para sabi niya, may mga politiko diyan, gusto nila yung mga tao maninatili sa mga squatter, etc. You know, they yeah. don't want to give them dignity and upward mobility because mas madali sila i-control. So unfortunately, hmm. there are people benefiting from keeping people uh from fully 
uh, realizing kanilang best potentials. At doon ko na-appreciate saan galing si Isko. Sabi niya, yan ang ayoko mangyari because I want others to experience the upward mobility I experienced myself. And that for That's me, right. that, was, that was one of the things that got my attention early on nung hindi pa siya nag-declare ng presidency. Actually, as sasabihin ko sa iyo, ang beneficiary ng kahirapan is yung masasamang ugaling politiko. Alam mo kung bakit? Aber, mag- magsorti ka nang hindi ka magbibigay ng bigas. Aber, magsorti ka na wala kang iaabot. May dadating ba sa yung mayaman doon para makinig? 'Di ba? I mean, let let's get real. No? Pero ang sa akin doon, we kami <laughs> sa totoo lang, no? Um, ako when, when I feel that na yung mga tao nandito, maybe they are longing that we will give something or maybe we're giving something I don't know. But you know what? At the end of the day, pag tumungtong ako doon, sisiguraduhin ko na pag yung 5 minutes or 10 minutes na binigay mo sa akin, uuwi yan na may baon yan, na motibasyon, may baon yan, na pag-asa. Kasi nandala namin. At yan din ang napapala nila. Pag nakita nila yung Usko Moreno, kasi hindi ko makakalimutan sinasabi ni Yorme Iskwan. Eh. Pag ako naging presidente, pwede na rin kayong mangarap na ang anak nyo magiging mayor, magiging presidente. Mag- sinasabi niya yon. At and, and that's, that he's a proof of progress. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. He's a proof. He's, he's really an exhibit B of prosperity. You know, prosperity in my book, I, I wrote a book called Prosperity. And I, um, the last line in that book is, prosperity is what others become because of you. You know, prosperity is what others become because of you. And, and, and you know, that's, that's what this Comoreno life is. It's what others have become because of him. Like what I will become because of him. If he did not choose me, if he did not convince me, Would there be a Carl Balita senator? No. I mean, if other parties, other, other presidential balls will invite me, I'll be reluctant, to be honest. I'll be very reluctant. But when the, the Isko Merano is the one who invited me, even my, even my youngest kid gave me permission to run. Why? Because he's the exhibit A of prosperity and progress. Right. right. And faith, hope, and love right. that, that we mentioned earlier. And uh, uh, ako, um, uh, yeah, please go ahead, Mark. I'll lang din. Ah. Kasi I was able to uh, join, uh, of course, yung team ISCO uh, from the very start. So I was mm-hmm. able to see yung, yung uh, kay uh, Dr. Carl, yung transformation din eh. Parang we always talk about it sa vlog ko eh. Yung sa mga listening tours, Dr. Carl, na mm-hmm. nung before, bago tayo nag-ikot, di ba, uh, mostly nung unang interview sa inyo, puro mga ano eh, mga theoretical and mga, mm-hmm. ang gaganda ng mga ideas, data-driven na mga policy solutions. Tapos, the more na yung aming listening tour, uh, parang ano eh, mas uh, nakakakonekta siya doon sa tunay na nangyayari sa bawat sulok ng bansa. Mm-hmm. Evolve. Oo, yeah. oh, yeah. eh, nag- mo, nag-evolve eh. And even how he speaks Oy, doon sa mga... Mm-hmm. Alam mo Mark, ang galing na observation mo. Remember, ang una nating tour was in Tarlac? Mm. Yeah, remember the Tarlac nakaharap namin mga farmers. farmers. Alam mo, e, e, papaano ba naman Richard? Saan ba ako, di ba nagtuturo ako sa graduate school? Ang tinuturo ako ay mga doc, doctorate students for business administration ng yeah. di ba ng, ng uh, audience iba. Yeah. Diba yung oh, audience, no? Exactly. Although yeah, sanay yeah. ako sa radyo, sanay ako sa teleradyo na binababa ko yung lenggwahe ko pero yung face to face, iba yon. Iba eh. pa rin. Oh, Alam mo talaga eh. ay I was so frustrated of myself no na sabi ko Correct. I know I knew na hindi ako nakakonek. Pero yeah. nung, na, nung nung nakinig ako even more, you know God gave us two ears and one mouth. Mm. The secret really of communication is listening. You know when we started listening and we we, we started you know connecting our bra- our our head with our hearts. Right. Wow. It it's amazing. It's amazing. This is something I would cherish for the rest of my life, no? Win or lose, I'm already a winner. Mm. Uh, just just by being in this learning journey transformative you know, experience yeah very very much you know but yeah. let me tell you something if i lose I, i'll just go back to business i'll just go back to teaching as a more empowered and enriched person and probably in business more popular brand that i was compared with what i was but you know if so i walang win, lose dito sa inyo so wala, so walang lose there's Pero, no lose here it's just a matter which win yeah but let me tell you richard if if i win Right. The, gain, the gain is not only the kind of service that I'm, I'm committed to deliver. Right. Which is what we're going to talk about now. <laughs> you, know, you know what's the gain? Ito, ito dito ko na surprise. Did you know that some of my friends are calling me now and are mm. telling me, and because they're observing me, sabi niya, Carl, pag nanalo ka, one of my friends told me, Carl, pag nanalo ka, tatanggap na ako ng government position, which I have right. rejected over the years. Right. Somebody right. even said, one old luminary in the professional world said, 
and professional world said, Carl, you know, if you win, am I too old to run? Mm. And I asked him, why? Why? Alam mo sabi niya? Because if you win, you are a proof that the Filipinos are considering ano, somebody like us. Yeah, alternative. Some, alternative. Some, no, no, something different. We're, we're yeah, technocrats. Yeah. You know, we're scientists. We're, we're right, men, of, right. men and women of science. Right. And, and, and the academe, you know, may, meron akong kilala na uh, former university president that said, na, alam mo, Carl, malatak mo na ako kahit kunsihal, makatulong lang sa gobyerno, yeah, yeah, yeah. magnanalo ka. <laughs> Sabi niya <laughs> noon. I mean, I, I could be such an inspiration for people I who are very the, afraid or don't, don't have the courage to actually yeah. try, even try. Diba? Right. Parang malala- barrier breaker eh. Parang barrier breaker talaga to eh. Oh. Trail, trailblazer, you know trailblazer, what? Trailblazer, pioneer, yeah. Sino ba namang, sino ba namang, uh, sorry, excuse me, term, pero sino ba namang matinong tao ang babangga sa mga billionaires in right. this race? I cannot right. even afford the television ads, to be honest. Right. Diba? And, and the others are just having so much of it. Well, it's not their problem that I don't have that resource or I'm not right. willing to spend that, that amount. It, it's right. really about, hey, I don't want to invest the money that would drive me to corruption later on. Because right. I'll, be, I'll be standing against it. The difference is that my moral compass is my family. And you know what? To, to hold three licenses, that means I read three codes of ethics. Mm. Because every profession is governed by code of ethics. So I know ethics. And, and you know, I have not only my license to lose like a professional, but I have my sector which pushed me to even lose. If, yeah. if, if, I, if I will be you know, corrupted by this, by this yeah. government. So parang ganoon. Pag oh, oh. nagpakain ako ng sistema, ang kalaban ko yung sektor na nagtulak sa akin. <laughs> Magbo-blow back na yan. And, yeah. and Doc Carl, bakit Senado ang pinili nyo? Anong meron sa Senado at anong gusto nyo gawin sa Senado? And why do you think it will make really a huge difference? It's like from I, the things you have mentioned a while ago as being a role model yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, yung, yung loss kasi, in the, sabi ko nga kung walang pandemia, walang Carl Balita running eh. And, and, and the, ah, the, the disruption... Okay. The disruptions in, in the way we live in, in almost every areas of our life, yun ang nag, magre-require ng revisitation of all the laws that we have. Isabi ko nga yung first topic natin, mental health. We have a mental health law. That, uh, not a very old law. But you know, if, if you look into that law, ang daming kailangang ayusin. You know, even, even um, our educational system, ang daming batas, kailangan, maraming kailangang ayusin. If we want to be in the better normal, I don't want to use new normal because in new normal, we're just accepting it like a bitter pill. I want this as a better normal. You know what? Because if the future will not be better, then what for are all these sacrifices and all these lessons that we hard earned from the pandemic experience? Diba? So, dun, dun ako. Um, very happy to offer myself. It's Senate. You know why? Because there are by the way, tinanggihan ko ang party list. Three party list, I have refused. Kasi yung senators ko konti, 24. So your voice will not be drowned in the, in the wilderness. So you know, when, when a senator stands up, the voice is heard. I, I, I just wish that more senators are capable of standing up. Because True. If, yeah, if, if, because if I ask you, I mean, you know, you know I, I, uh, who are, I, I mean, who can stand up? then we should start really electing people who could stand up. For whom? Not for those who can stand up for themselves, but for those who could barely stand up for, for themselves, literally and figuratively. You see, those who are least lost and last in the society. I mean, the poor, you know, the, the marginalized, you know, and, 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 and this, the victims. The micro enterprises. I don't care about yung large. They can hire good lawyers to protect them. What about the micro? You see, the teachers. You know, the teachers. We, we want to invest on the teachers. Sila ang pinakamababa sweldo. Kasi ah. I mean, as professionals, then how do we attract the best and the brightest? De ba? De ba na chismis sa sila yung maraming utang? Hindi lang teacher lahat. Ang daming Pilipino maraming utang. Because financial literacy becomes our weakness. Diba? Hindi tayo tinuruan eh kung paano tayo humawak ng pera. Tinuruan lang tayo nung paano maging employable. Diba? <laughs> Mga ganun bagay. So, I want to correct those. And that's why I want to be there um, in the Senate. 
Marami salamat. Mark, do you have a question to add? Kasi alam ko uh, lang pa sa uh, uh, yeah. I remember lang na parang uh, you told me dun sa una kong interview sa'yo na uh, if ever uh, papalarin and you, you become elected as a senator, yeah, you are ready uh, from day one sa mga sa mga bills na na you will push for and ano ba yung mga priority na na bills na uh, from day one ay eh, yung kaagad yung isusulong no? sa number Senate. one number one kailangan natin ng edcom edcom happened um, how many decades ago uh, it led to a lot of changes in our educational system yung tre focalize tayo yung dating dex tagiwahiwalay uh, etc now we have four reasons to call for dep- uh, the edcom number one we need to check the value of the EDCOM 1. Number two, we have to look into the K-12. Number three, we have to look into the look into the uh, Industry 4.0, which we were afraid of even prior to the pandemic. And number four, we have to look at the post-pandemic education, EDCOM. Important. Number two, we have to make sure that we have a good budget for the universal health care law. It's a beautiful law, but we have to make sure that the oversight function of Senate, of the Senate, as a health professional, I'll make sure that it's going to work because we have failed with primary health care, which was started in the 1970s. No, may marami tayong failures dyan. We don't want the universal health care law. And of course, the one of the most important law that the senator and, and legislators pass is the, the budget. Kahit paano ganda niyang batas na yan kung walang budget, patay tayo dyan. And of course, the micro-enterprise commission so that we can, pwede nating alalayan yung pivots and yung yung resurrection of the dead micro enterprises. Um, ako yung tatlo lang sa KKK ko, yung tatlong yun ang, ang priority ko. I mean, each of them. Uh, and by the way, universal health law will also ensure, uh, universal, universal health care will also ensure that there is uh, mental health uh, consideration. Now, I'm, I'm very passionate about it. And you, you, know, you know why. We talked about it off the air kanina, pero I'm very passionate about it. The more I'm convinced that uh, we have to look into this. The promotive and the preventive aspect of our healthcare will have to be strengthened. And by the way, that's the specialty of nurses. You know, right. promotive and preventive healthcare. Yan pong specialty namin mga nurses. Yung curative, rehabilitative Doctors. sa doctor yon. Yeah. Pero yung promotive, preventive amin yon. And that's what yeah. I'm bringing in the Senate. Right. Thank you very much. Siguro ang inisip ko dyan, build back better. No? Siguro medyo may pagkaganon. Mm. If we're mm. going to build back better, hindi lang back to previous normal na marami ng problema. But we want to really up the game when it comes to our healthcare system among, among others. I'm sure uh, we can go on forever. I love the energy. Maraming salamat, uh, Doc Carl. I really enjoy it. I'm glad to see all these years. Andyan pa rin yung passion. Andyan pa rin yung dedication nyo. And, and as much as you're passionate and fiery, I can also see this compassion that actually calms you down. So I don't know if plant na sa likod niyo na nakikita ko. Is it the timing or nasa kalinga po kayo? Ako bagyo po ako. So, you know, that, that, that's a special part of the country to me, of course, in many ways. Maraming salamat, uh, Dr. Uh, Carl Balita, for joining us. Public educator, uh, you know, uh, uh, social entrepreneur. And kung papala rin po kayo, the next senator of the Philippines and, you know, the first person, I think, with the registered nursing background to be there as one of the big voices of the country in the highest chambers of our legislature. Maraming salamat again, uh, uh, Dr. Carl Balita, and hope to get back to you soon and hopefully and even in better circumstances and in person. Maraming salamat and God bless. Yeah. In, in, in closing, ha, labing dalawa naman yung pipiliin nila. Mano ba naman yung isama nila yung isama? Oo oh, naman. <laughs> exactly. Isang minimal, Unlike Presidente, di ba? Unlike Presidente. Meron yeah. kayong maraming choice. At saka yun yung problema. Again, na- mapadagdag. I think usually people just remember seven or eight. Minsan kulang nga eh, di ba? So I hope people go beyond that. And yeah. yes, please don't forget our guests, especially the ones who I think pasok sila dun sa mga values na uh, you know uh, you, you advocate for at saka yung kailangan talaga natin ating bansa. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Doc, Thank you so Arbalita. much. Okay, the so. honor is mine. Thank you. My pleasure. God bless.